My name is Paulina Williams. I'm a partner in the environmental section at Baker Botts. During an incident, you may think you have too much on your plate to think about what comes next. But in my experience, even in those difficult days of immediate incident response, there may be opportunities to integrate considerations of the natural resource damage assessment that will follow. Federal statutes like CERCLA and OPA and similar state statutes require the assessment and restoration of, of natural resources that have been injured. Natural resources include things like wildlife habitat and human uses, so for example, recreation. Natural Resource Damage Assessments, or NERDA, are the mechanism for government agencies called trustees to determine compensation for injury. Damages are the cost of restoring and replacing the injured natural resources, essentially. And what that often can be is dollars scaled to, for example, habitat construction projects. The responsible party and the trustees usually cooperate on the assessment phase and ultimately agree to a settlement. Awareness of the NERDA framework helps you make decisions during the response that may minimize damage associated with the response actions themselves. If you can reduce the impact of the response, that's good for the environment and reduces liability. Now, NERDA considerations cannot interfere with prompt and necessary response actions, but there are steps that are appropriate to keep in mind during those response decisions. So for example, we've seen field work done to demonstrate that oil in an oil spill was staying in the water as opposed to being embedded in the shore by wave action. That meant that the response didn't need to do testing and excavate in those areas. And it also meant that no damages were later assessed as natural resource damages for that. And that was a response decision, but one that avoided a significant increase in natural resource damage. So similarly, driving trucks across certain areas, for example, a beach, it can be very damaging. So implementing and documenting adherence to a protocol that would limit where trucks could drive and the size of those vehicles, that can provide data and has provided data to show where damage has not occurred. Now, tracking and developing data where you can in response uh, is another way to help later help assess those injuries. So for example, you can try to sample in a location that establishes baseline conditions before a tide comes in and the release affects that area. So that may be a minor addition to work that's already occurring in the field. Another example is understanding why a closure is happening, a fishing closure, a park closure. Um, in order to understand when those can be lifted, you have to understand what the criteria were to put it in place. And then you can have control over that aspect of the damages. So the key really is recognizing that NERDA factors can seamlessly integrate with decision making in a response action and can guide development of valuable real-time information that ultimately helps minimize and control the liability in the long term.